Capos, the sworn enemy of music theory. And today we're gonna break down everything about them, uh, from beginner stuff and how to use them, to more advanced stuff as far as modulating keys in different parts of the neck so you never have to put the capo on the 10th fret again. But uh, I just wanna start off and just talk about what a capo is and how to use it, okay? So generally, this guy right here is a capo. It's the thing that a lot of times you will see people stick to the top of their headstocks. Now, the main capo that I have is this $50 G7 capo, but I only really have that because I'm kind of a douche. When really, this $20 Kaiser capo is the one that I almost always recommend. Uh, I've had it for like six years and it's fine. Uh, sometimes you'll see super cheap capos. Uh, maybe they have like a little tie around thing. I actually, my first capo was like that, but it kind of wore out after a year because little ridges kind of came into the rubber and then the string would sit in there and it'd be really buzzy. So first of all, let's just talk about how to apply a capo. Now, if you have like a spring right here on the end, that should be on your face side. So it'll be like this side of the guitar if you're lefty uh, the other way. But basically you wanna put it on this side. I've seen some people put it on this side. Now this is kind of ridiculous because if you're changing, you know, you keep bumping into it, right? So it's meant to be on this side and you want to get it as close to the fret as you can without actually hitting it. So it's really kind of like a replacement for your finger. So let's say a song calls for a capo on the third fret. You'd find the third fret and you'd stick that baby on there as close to that fret as you can get without actually touching it. If you're too far away, you're gonna get a lot of buzziness, right? So you wanna be almost right on the fret to get a good clean sound, okay? So now what does a capo actually do? It's super helpful in really quickly being able to change keys, uh, the key of a song higher or lower, which is uh, which can be fa fantastically helpful if you're working with a singer. And let's say there's like a song capo on the third fret and the progression is just like a C to a G to a F, right? And say you're playing that with a singer, and maybe like that's too high for them, you can just move it down one, and then play the same shapes, right? If that's too low for them, you can move it up and just keep moving around until you find whatever range a singer is comfortable in, okay? Now, the downside to having a capo is, like I said earlier, it's kind of like the enemy of music theory because, like, let's say we're playing on the third fret again, right? Then we're playing a C major chord. You could be talking to another musician. Like let's say you're talking to like a trumpet player or something and they wanna know uh, what chord to play. Like, oh, what chord is that? And you're like, oh, it's a C chord. Well, actually this isn't really a C chord. You're using a C chord shape on the third fret. So really your root note is now the sixth fret of the A string, which is an E flat. So uh, in reality, you're playing like an E flat major chord, but you might be thinking of it as a C major chord, okay? The C shape is giving you an E flat major. Now, uh, you know, some people that's fine. If like you're like a, a singer songwriter and your ambitions in guitar are just to learn the bare minimum you need to do to accompany yourself, that is all well and good and I'm not judging you, but if you fancy yourself a guitar player, you wanna be able to get off of using the capo as a crutch. All right, I see that happen a lot of times. Now, there are certain instances where actually, you know, it's not really a crutch, it's just something super helpful. Like uh, for one example, I like playing stuff in the key of A. And one of the reasons I like that is because you can use the open strings to help you get a really nice open sound. So instead of playing like an A bar chord, I can actually kind of open up some of those strings and get like a nice big chimey kind of sound. Right, so the open strings are helping with maybe, you know, maybe what some people might consider more advanced chord voicings. Now let's say I want to do the same thing, but I wanted to move it up and play it in the key of B. Well, B is two notes higher than the key of A. So I can actually just put the capo on the second fret and then play the same things I was playing. I can still think of my A shape, even though now this is giving me like an open B sounding type chord in the key of B, okay? So that's an example of where the capo isn't really a crutch, it's helping me achieve something that wouldn't be possible because there's no way I'd be able to reach the open strings and make some of those chord voicings that I may be going for, right? Now, one thing that you really wanna be able to do, and like, let's say you just wanna like start playing songs knowing the bare minimum amount of chords, all right? So that's where music theory actually becomes incredibly helpful instead of having to rely on the internet and chord charts and being like, like one common thing I see all the time is 
somebody putting the capo on the 10th fret, and they're trying to play chords, and their hands are so squish that it's like really, really hard for them to do so. Now there's a really easy way that you can fix this from never ever happening again, and it just comes with a bit of music theory, okay? So let's say we're in that situation where the capo's on the 10th fret, and uh, the, the song that we need is a C, a G, and A minor, okay? Now, if we actually know the root notes of these chords, instead of playing a C, in reality, this would be a B flat major, an F major, and then a G minor, okay? Now, maybe that's a little bit above our pay grade and, we, and you haven't gotten that far music theory-wise to figure those out, but what you need to do is you need to learn the chords in a key for two different keys, and I bet you probably know these chords anyways, right? Every key, like every major scale, every key, like the key of G, the key of C, has six main chords that go with it, all right? And those all come from the seven notes of the major scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, and any of those notes can become chords, and really six of those are usable chords in you know most popular music. The seventh one is a diminished chord, that's cool, a lot of people use that. Uh, we're not gonna get too far into that. I'll link you to some other videos if you wanna really learn about chord building, which is something I highly suggest. But just to kinda get you started, Every key has six main chords, and most of the uh, original chords that you learn are probably the six main chords in the key of C, which would be C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, and A minor, okay? So if we numbered those chords in order in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, we have the one chord, C major, the two chord, D minor, the three chord, E minor, the four chord, F major, the five chord, G major, the six chord, A minor. So you notice that the first, fourth, and fifth are major chords, the two, three, and six are minor chords. Super important concept, probably the most concept, the most important concept in music theory that you'll ever run into, right? One, four, and five are major, two, three, and six are minor. Now, it's really important to know those six chords and then to know the chords in the key of G. And we're gonna to get to why that is in just a second, but basically you probably already know these two. G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, and E minor. G, A, B, C, D, E, same thing we just applied. G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor, okay? so. One, four, and five are major, two, three, and six are minor. Now, if you just know that those are, and some of those overlap, like you'll notice that G major is the one chord in the key of G and the five chord in the key of C. A lot of these keys have overlap, so it's really not that hard to learn all of these different chords. But again, let's go back to that capo on the 10th fret situation, where we're really kind of like running out of space here. So, if we take the C and the G and the A minor, let's assume that we're using our C shapes under this capo, okay? So this would be the one chord in the key of C major, the five chord, G, and the six chord. So we can call this a one, five, six progression, okay? Now, the distance between C and G is as follows, okay? So if we have, again, uh, you don't have to know this right now, but the third fret on the A string is a C. Now, if we take this and find out the distance, the interval between C and G, we'd go C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, okay? So from three to 10, that's a seven fret distance, okay, from C to G. So if we have our C chords on the 10th fret, we can move this capo seven frets back from 10 to three. Okay, now when we do that, all we have to do is take that one, five, six progression and change it from C, our C chords, to G, our G chords, okay? So now our one chord would be a G, our five chord would be G, A, B, C, D, and our six chord would be E, okay? So if we think of the progression now, G to D to E minor. And then take it to the 10th fret and do the same thing with our C chords, C. See, it sounds kind of bad because I'm squishing it. There's not a lot of stuff going on. It's, it's, it's a little bit harder to play that progression. There's so much more room 
with the capo on the third fret using the key of G chords, which is giving me the exact same chords that we had. In fact, like I said, in reality, I'm not playing a G major chord, I'm, I'm playing a B flat major chord. And then when I go to the C chord, I'm playing, uh, or what, yeah, what was the next one, G, D? When I go to this D chord, I'm actually playing an F major chord, in reality, and then, uh, the E minor is a G minor, like we said before, just with different shapes. So, as long as you know those two shapes, uh, those two groups of shapes, C major shapes and G major shapes, you can always move them around, okay? And now let's do kind of like the inverse. So let's say that we actually had the 10th fret again, we're stuck up here, but now we're using G's shapes, all right? And we have, let's say, a one, two, a four, so from G to C to five to six. So G major, C major, D major, and E minor. So our progression is a one, four, five, six. And let's say we wanna take that from G's chords to C's chords, okay? So we already said that if we wanna go from C to G, there's a seven fret distance. Now if we wanna go from G to C, we just have to find out the distance from there. Now, one way you could do it is you could think of there only being 12 notes in all of music, which is another concept that maybe you should kind of look into. But uh, all that means is if we've gone seven from one, right, to C to G, the difference between, if there's only 12, the difference between 12 and seven is five. So five notes away. Another way we could get that uh, is if we take uh, like the G, the third fret on the E string, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So again, let's apply that five notes separate uh, G from C. So if we have our one, four, five, six chords here, we can go five frets back. So 10 minus five is five. Capo on the fifth fret, we need to go one, four, five, six in C. So C, one, two, three, four, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A minor, C, F, G, A minor. Those give me the same chords as if I was on the 10th fret. G, C, D. But I'm having a much easier time playing them with my capo five frets back using the key of C chords because I have a lot more room for my hand to kind of like operate in a more comfortable way, all right? So let's talk about a situation in which maybe you look up the chords to a song and there's some bar chords that maybe you don't quite have under your belt right away. So let's say that the, the chords of the song would be like G sharp major to C sharp major to D sharp major, all right? And you know, you maybe might know how to make those bar chords, but maybe you're not quite comfortable enough on acoustic guitar to really hold those down for uh, a song or something like that. That's when those numbers come in really handy, knowing that the one, four, and five are the major chords in any key. So we know that that C sharp and that D sharp are right next to each other. So those are the four and the five, all right? So that means the G sharp major is the one. One, four, five. Now I also know that G sharp is really close to G. In fact, it's only one note higher. So what you would do, knowing your G shaped chords, you would just put the capo on the first fret and now play the one, four, five in the key of G, which would be, since we've gone one capo up, we can go backwards instead of G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp. Now we have G, C, and D. And again, those shapes, those chord shapes, even though our hand is thinking G, C, D, are actually yielding a G sharp, C sharp, D sharp. And then eventually if you kind of start looking at the patterns between those chords, you'll be able to quickly identify where maybe the four and the five are, the one is, and the two, three, and six. Because again, most songs don't go outside of a key. And eventually too, once you kind of get a handle on where those chords are within a key, it's not gonna be a big deal adding chords from outside of a key. Now, also too, there are some specialty capos that you might see. And what they do is they actually might shorten uh, the length of it. Like you'll see that this capo kind of has a little bit of room to spare off the edge of the fretboard. Now, not all capos will fit all guitars. Some classical guitars have much wider necks and a capo like this might not actually fit that. That's why sometimes you'll see like capos made specifically for classical guitar. Another one uh, that I've seen a lot are these kind of weird alternate tuning capos that maybe they do something to the effect of they only will 
uh, clamp down like the lowest four strings and you can kind of leave strings open, which can be kind of cool if maybe you want to play around in keys where you're droning uh, lower high notes uh, to kind of get those big open sounds we were kind of experimenting with before. So there's a lot of different kind of capos out there, but this is just like the most traditional one uh, that I see around a lot. So anyways, I think that is a good overview on how to use a capo. And please, if you guys have any questions at all, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and I'll get back to you all as soon as I can. Thanks a lot.